Okay, we're going to do experiment 11, redox reactions. We're only going to do parts 2, 3, and 4. Okay, in part 2, we're going to take a look at how pH conditions affect um, redox reactions. So we're going to start with a solution of iron um, 3 chloride which is an acidic solution. Um, so th um, this has a very light yellow color. Okay, and to this, let's grab a dropper pipette here. To this, we're going to add two milliliters of Ki. See what happens. Let's work our first milliliter, and here's our second milliliter. Okay, we'll get a little bit of a swirl. Okay, you can see that it went from being a light yellow color to a more dark orange color. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I have another sample of iron 3 chloride, again the light yellow color. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 10 drops of starch. Now you might remember from a previous experiment that starch Starch reacts with iodine, and it turns a very dark blue-black color. Okay, so once again, just like in the previous part, I'm going to add two milliliters of Ki. So you see that the Ki changed it from a light yellow to now a dark blue color, which indicates the presence of iodine. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I have some 3 molar NaOH in this dropper bottle, and I'm going to add dropwise the NaOH, we're going to see what happens. Alright, so let's do five drops first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Don't see any change yet. So let's add five more. One, two, three, four, five. Add a little extra there, it's okay. Oh, I don't see any change. It looks like it's getting a little lighter at the bottom there. Alright, let's add some more. One, two, three, four, five. So now we're at 15 drops. And it's definitely getting a little lighter there at the bottom. Let's try to add some more and see if we get some more change there. Two, three, four, five. Okay, it definitely lightened up quite a bit. It's getting a little lighter at the bottom. It looks like it's a precipitate actually sitting there at the bottom. So let's try adding some more NaOH. It doesn't seem to be lightening up as much as we want. getting a little bit more. It's getting a little lighter. Definitely getting lighter at the bottom. So it's going from a dark blue to a deep rusty orange color. And there's a little bit of a precipitate there. So the blue color, the dark blue color is going away. Okay. 
All right, so let's move on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we have two samples here of potassium dichromate. Potassium dichromate has chromium in the plus six oxidation state, and it's a nice orange color. Nice orange color there. All right, so we're gonna add two milliliters of iron sulfate, iron two sulfate. So here's our first milliliters. Oh, look at that. Gotta change right away. All right, so it went from being a really nice orange to a very deep green in honor of St. Patrick's Day today. All right. So the next thing we're going to try here, get the other sample of potassium dichromate. Now this time we are going to add some cobalt nitrate. So two milliliters of cobalt nitrate. See what happens. Cobalt nitrate's about the same color as this potassium dichromate. So let's see what we got. Let's, let's stir it a little bit. Doesn't seem like we're getting anything there. Uh, no. no change there. All right, so we don't have a good a change there. Okay, so that's part two. So we took a look at some reactions um, under different pH. So we did a few reactions under acidic conditions and one reaction we did under basic conditions. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to part three. We're gonna do some reactions with um, hydrogen peroxide. So I have a hydrogen peroxide sample here. Um, peroxide, is, hydrogen peroxide is sensitive to light, so we have it in this amber bottle. And I was sure to keep it there um, until we were ready to start working. All right, so I'm gonna go grab another drop. I am going to pour some peroxide into the beaker. So the first thing we're going to do is add, so we have a few drops of chromium 3-nitrate. Um, so you can see it's sort of a dark blue color there at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do before we add our peroxide is I'm going to add about 20 drops of NaOH. So it went from a that dark blue color to now a, a little bit of a dark green. And there's a little bit of a precipitate down there you might be able to see there. Okay, so now we are going to add two milliliters of peroxide. So there's one. Two. All right, and it looks like we went from that dark green color to sort of a dirty brown color. Okay, so now we're 
we're going to take, this is iron 3 chloride, and we used this before, but um, it was a very light yellow color. This iron 3 chloride is not acidified, so we are going to um, use a non acidified version. And let's add our 2 milliliters of peroxide here to see what happens. And it might be a little hard to see there, but it is definitely bubbling. You can see a little bit on the top there. Yeah, now it's really bubbling. Okay. So now we're ready for part four. This is our challenge. Okay, and in the test tube here, I have some iron 2 sulfate. It's a really pretty light green, mint green color. Um, and we are going to add about one to two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to it, and we're going to see what happens. Here's our first. Oh wow, so it turned brown. Turned brown. And it started to bubble. We really need the one milliliter here. a little bit more and see what happens. Okay, here's some more peroxide. It's bubbling some more. Okay, so those two observations, it turned brown, from green to brown, and it's bubbling. It bubbles more when you stir it. All right, so those are all of the reactions for redox reactions. Okay, now you're ready to go write your lab report.